Alright, so this is my first ever PC building experience, just dictated by PC Building Simulator because we didn't record any of the building process, but you know, for privacy reasons, it's not my PC, it's not my house, you know, privacy is an important thing. Um, now, unfortunately, PC Building Simulator is very, very shit in terms of the parts that it offers for you to build with on the game. It doesn't actually have that large of a selection for modern standards. So we've had to go with something very similar to what we was using and I began this process by selecting the Corsa IQ 220T RGB Airflow. I think this was the closest thing visually to the case we was actually using which was the IQ 4000X white edition with the RGB fans in the front. So okay, of course we start by unscrewing the case because otherwise we cannot actually get to you know the the parts where we need to build. We can't build inside a case if it's closed. So the first thing we did was take off both the front and back panels. We did actually not touch the front of the case like I'm doing here. I was just removing the fans so I could replace them with ones more similar to the ones we actually used in the proper build, um, which this took me far too long, I'll, I'll admit, so I'll fast forward a little bit. Okay, so now that I've got those installed, uh, I am now going to put one in the back of the case as well because the case did not come with a back fan. So instead we had to purchase a separate one and use that. We did not use the same one that I'm using in this gameplay, rather we used a different one which the name of it escapes me. I'll put it on the screen when I find a Google image of it. Anything that I use that is not accurate to what's in the game, I will just slap an image on the screen and I'll say it if I know what it is. But anyways, case is opened up, all the fans are good to go. So at this part, we are ready to start building on the game and we of course started by building on top of the motherboard now we didn't screw the motherboard into the case straight away instead we just took it out of the packaging and we built on top of the motherboard box which i personally think is one of the smartest things you can do because if you build directly into the case you're gonna have to mess about screwing it in and if you get something wrong you have to take it back out again so it is a smart decision to just build straight on top of the board as soon as you take it out of the uh, wrapper now like I said before, PC Building Simulator is quite limited in its options of parts so we can't use a 12th generation processor in this build on the game unfortunately so I've had to opt for a 10th generation processor instead which is the next closest thing. But to support this processor we of course need a motherboard and the processor that we were using was the uh, i7-12700K in terms of the actual build but in terms of the one that we have to use on the game we're having to use the um, i7-10700K instead because that is the next closest thing I suppose and the board we are using on the game is the MSI Mag Z590 Tomahawk with Wi-Fi but the board we used for the actual build in real life was the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Elite DDR480X board the non-Wi-Fi edition I believe it was so first thing we did was install the CPU which was nice and easy, a little bit stressful for a first time builder of course because there's a lot of tension on the hook but we eventually got over that. But after that we put the RAM in which uh, in this case we had already done RAM before or when I say we I mean the individual whose PC we was building they had already swapped out RAM before so they knew that you had to push quite hard on it and it was a little bit stressful still because you do have to push it a fair bit. Uh, simply because it's you know you need to push it so the clips will clip back into place and you do need a fair bit of pressure which at first you might think could break the board but uh, it doesn't matter push as hard as you want uh, well to an extent but just make sure that you don't break the board it's quite simple but after we installed the RAM I put four sticks here uh, because the game does not offer us two sticks of 16 it only offers us eight gigabytes as the maximum stick so in real life we had two sticks of uh, 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz of the Corsa Vengeance RGB but instead of it being the uh, standard Vengeance I believe it was the SL version and they obviously don't offer that on the game either so we've just had to go with a standard Vengeance RGB Pro with four sticks of 8 gigs instead. Next we installed the SSD which was the Samsung 980 Pro and of course this game does not have the 980 Pro either so I've just settled for the next closest thing so I just picked something with the highest read speed um, so we installed that with relative ease because it only requires a screw or two and that was essentially it for the motherboard after that we was ready to go so we screwed it into the case which is probably one of my biggest regrets but I'll talk more about that later next up we installed all the cables into the back of the power supply before putting it into the case the power supply in question was the Corsa RM750X but in white 
Once we installed all the cables, it was time to start plugging a few things in. And this is where some things were a little bit tricky because some uh, cables were hard to get into the board, such as the CPU cable. But thankfully the case has some very nice uh, cable management options, so it wasn't as difficult as we anticipated it might be, but there was still a little bit of fiddling to actually get it into the case. Now as you can see on this case, this case on the game also has a RGB fan controller in the back, which was immensely helpful uh, for us when we was building the actual thing, because not only were the front three fans already installed into it, so we did not have to mess about routing them or anything like that, but also it allowed us to install the back fan onto there so there was less cables showing at the front of the, uh, of the case. So the motherboard and the cable management was as clean as possible to look at with the naked eye. Which was what we were going for, we wanted a, a nice white build that was easy on the eyes and it was tidy in terms of its cable management. The next thing we installed was the cooler which we opted for an all-in-one of the NZXT Kraken X53 which Water cooling is not my personal choice to begin with, but after using one of them in an actual build, I am now more swayed towards them. However, I was very surprised that this game had it, but as you can see, I encountered a little bit of a roadblock here on the game, because the case is too small to support the cooler as well as a back fan. When I was building into this case on the game, I did think it looked a little bit small horizontally. Vertically, there's plenty of room that is fine, but lengthways, it just looks really small, and it turns out I was correct. So all of this building I did was essentially for nothing because the cooler does not fit, and I did not want to substitute any parts where possible. So I decided to restart the whole process all over again in a larger case. The case choice the second time round for PC Building Simulator was the Be Quiet Dark Bear 700, which was a case I did not know even existed, but after building in it on the game, I think it is actually a very nice case. It maybe is a little bit too spacious lengthways this time, but it's the best thing I've got that looked closest to the case we used in real life. Apart from obviously the case we used IRL does not have RGBs on the case itself, just the fans. But I can't do anything about that unfortunately, so I just had to pick the next closest thing that looked like it from uh, an internal and external side point and point of view, and I believe this it worked quite well. So I followed the same process this time, I uninstalled all the front and back fans and replaced them with the white Corsair ones we used before, which again are not the same as the ones used in real life, but are the next closest thing the game has to offer, and I also removed the hard drive bare from the front of this case simply because we did not use a hard drive in this build. So I will fast forward when I have everything installed and then we will continue where we left off with the water cooler. Alright, so now that everything is installed into the case properly, we can now try and fit the water cooler back into the case, which was the Kraken X53, of course, in white. I have no idea why the fans on the game of the liquid cooler are, are not RGB, but IRL the fans on the radiator were in fact RGB fans and they did look quite nice. But anyways, we got that screwed into the case with relative ease. Installing the fans onto the radiator itself was the hard part for us because that went a little bit wrong for about an hour and we ended up having to uh, return to the build the next day to finish it off because we got to this stage and a couple of things went wrong and we were missing a few wires anyway because we lost them. So we had to continue the next day regardless to how fast we uh, did this process, which was a bit of a shame. I did want to finish it in one day, but we couldn't do anything about it, unfortunately. Upon returning the next day and installing the AIO, the last thing to do was install the graphics card. We used a Republic of Gamers card, the full name of it escapes me, but it is RGB and it is a 3060. I believe it is 10GB or 12, I don't think it was 8, but regardless it is a pretty good card and it should be suffice to say that it runs everything absolutely beautifully in the end. So. The installation process for the card was very easy, we had no problems with this, cable managing it again very easy, it's a shame that we had to leave some parts dangling because we didn't need all the pins, but that is something we cannot control, but we, but we think we've hidden it uh, decently well. But after the GPU was sorted, everything was in the case, everything was plugged in and ready to go. All that was left to do now was plug in the power supply, the mouse and the keyboard, and hit that power button on the front of the case and see if it turned on to see if we had done everything correctly. We made sure the power supply was switched on, all static was drained from the system prior, and everything was plugged in, we double triple checked it all. So, when we press that power button, this is what happened. Three, two, one. Yeah! So as you can see, nothing worked. 
which we had no idea why. Everything was plugged in, we double triple checked it all, everything was fully in and everything was working. So what we did was we swapped which uh, mains the plug was plugged into for the power supply. We just gave it a quick swap and then we tried it again and everything turned on this time, everything was fully operational and we was good to go. However, this is where things got a little bit complicated. At first we went into the BIOS as most people tend to do and this was a normal process. We literally just enabled the XMP profile for the RAM so it can perform at 3600 MHz which is fine. And then after that we just made sure everything else was fully working, all the fans were connected, the temperatures were fine. In other words, we just proof checked everything to make sure we did nothing wrong, that everything was recognised, which it was. So for a first attempt at building a PC, the fact that nothing went wrong at this part, we was pretty chuffed with ourselves, and we called it a job well done at that point. However, it wasn't job well done just yet because the PC hadn't actually fully booted, simply because we hadn't tried to load Windows yet. So after we f finished configuring with our BIOS, we had to plug in the USB stick I prepared with a Windows download on it, and it didn't work. This is where things started to get a little bit tricky and we started to panic because when you plug in the USB stick into your PC to boot Windows from, you're supposed to go to a screen where you select your languages and then you press begin installation process. Once you do this, it prompts you to enter a product key but in our case it did not do that, instead it said we was missing certain files or driver files and we was very confused as to why this was the case. So what we had to do was I had to run home to use my old PC to plug in the USB and re-download Windows onto it which took about 40 minutes because the old PC wasn't very good. But I remembered I had also prepared another USB stick for myself for when we used mine because I was intending to just leave that USB stick with my friend. So I decided to bring that USB stick as well and it's a good job I did because upon returning to his house to finish the build, the USB stick I gave him and re-prepared still did not work. So what we had to do was we had to use the USB stick that I had prepared instead and upon doing so, we actually had a good go at setting the PC up. And upon doing so, the PC setup was finally working. Everything was operational at last. We have got onto that window screen and it asked us for that product key. Now of course you just skip this process and you acquire that product key however you like. That does not bother me and I will not disclose how we acquired ours. But after that, it took around a minute and a half to install Windows. The Windows setup process where you do your manual things, that took about five minutes. And after doing that, the PC was actually ready. We had fully installed Windows. Everything was operational. So after that, we of course installed programs like Steam, IQ, RGB Fusion. All the required things to make the PC look nice and all the required programs they would be using on a uh, majority of the screen time. So of course, Chrome. Steam, Battle.net, Epic Games, because after all we did build a gaming PC here. So after a very long process, which we calculated to be roughly 14 hours of building, we finally built our first PC and it looks gorgeous and it performs fantastically, much much better than the old system, which was running on a 3GB card of a 1060 equivalent desktop edition and then the processor was only an i5 4th generation I believe. So it wasn't exactly a great system, however this new one should last a very long time and it looks really nice. I, I will display any pictures I took on the day here and any, if I receive any updated pictures I will also display them now. But as for that, you've seen the hardware, you've seen what we did with it on PC Building Simulator. Of course it's not an accurate representation, but this is the best I can do unfortunately. And that is essentially my first PC building experience. We did hope to get it finished in a day um, and we did hope to do mine first as well but because it took so long to have my CPU arrive from Amazon because of the seller that I bought it from before refunding to go to Amazon Direct, it didn't arrive in time and the day that it, we did pick it up from the sorting office, uh, uh, his parts were already here by that point so we did not see much point in starting mine because he wanted to do his, he had everything ready to go anyways so we ended up doing his first and I'm quite glad we did actually because it taught me a lot about the process and I do think his is the overall better system and I do think it looks nicer as well uh, but of course that is just down to how he built it and down to the parts and the case that he selected because the cable management on that case is absolutely phenomenal in comparison to the one we use for mine but yeah, that is essentially it. Like I said, 
I'm going to list the hardware once more and I can recommend this build to absolutely anybody whether or not you're a first time builder, an experienced builder or you're wanting to get into PCs etc. It was a very fun process, it wasn't easy at first but once, the more you figure it out and the more you get on with it, the more you understand it and the easier it becomes. So it wasn't a very difficult process, it was a very smooth one to an extent and the final product is more than worth our time and efforts, it was a very satisfying experience. And we only had to wait just under a week to start the next build, which would be upgrading my old system, which would include cleaning the old one and then swapping all the parts over, which considering it would be a bit more of a simple build, it actually turned out to be a lot more difficult than the first one. But more about that in the next video. So thank you all for watching this. Please share your PC building experiences in the comments. If you would like to start a chat, I would be more than happy to. And let me know if you want to see more PC videos in the future because I am very passionate about PCs now. I absolutely love building them and I love how they work. I'm just fascinated by computers in general and I would love to make more content on computers in general. So thank you all once more and I'll see you later.